Welcome back to Computer Networks. Uh, in the last video, we talked a little bit about network architecture and the need for a layered approach. Um, now, one of the key things that comes from that is that each layer has to implement protocols to interface to the layers above and below it. Uh, and these protocols actually are then a really important part of a computer network architecture. So as we say, they're defining the interface between uh, the layers in the same system. And the other thing that they do that's really important is that when you connect two systems using uh, given protocols, because they're both using the same layer things, that the same layer on each uh, host or for each, that each application is accessing actually have a peering relationship where the network abstraction below them conceals all of this fine detail of uh, and complexity and lets them act as though they're communicating directly to one another as peers. And so this is, a, one, again, one of the really key uh, outcomes of this. And so as we say, there are two interfaces for each protocol uh, object. There is the service interface, which is where the layer above comes in and says, hey, I want to do such and such. And then there is the peer to peer interface between instances of the protocol, which access the layer below uh, to, achieve, to achieve that peer to peer interface. And so protocol actually has more than one meaning here. So we can say it's overloaded in its meaning. Uh, the specification of that peer to peer interface as to how two peers communicate in a given protocol, but then also actually the thing that implements the protocol is typically also referred to as the, um, uh, the protocol. Uh, yeah, so again, looking at that pictorially, if we have you know, something higher up in the network layer, the high level object on one host and it wants to communicate with the high level object on the second host. Um, we can see there the um, <coughs> part of me, those objects, and they both use a service interface down to the protocol below them. Uh, and then those protocols below them implement the peer to peer interface between them, which actually may then be using the next layer down to achieve that. So this is these two different uh, roles and it's really worth uh, getting a clear understanding of that. So when we're defining protocols, then um, we start actually by thinking about what we want the protocol to do. So we start with the pros, the actual description. So file transfer protocol, we want to say, well, yep, we want to be able to transfer files from one host to another. Then we start breaking that down, saying that there should be a mechanism uh, where an application can ask for a listing of the files that are on the, the remote host. Uh, and then to be able to request one of those and to have the content of that file come through. So we start with this very uh, high level kind of uh, understanding of what we're trying to implement. Then we move from that into pseudocode where we actually start saying, okay, let's actually try and describe this protocol a little bit more algorithmically. And to really pin down, this will often turn out kind of corner cases and things that need to be thought about carefully uh, to make it work reliably. And then the next stage is actually to come up with a state transition diagram where we say, okay, the protocol is in a particular state until it gets requested something or until it sends a message or until it receives a message or a timeout or some other action occurs. And so once it's been, uh, it can be described as a state transition diagram, now it's ready to be able to be implemented. And if it is implemented well, <laughs> and, they, and two different hosts implement it correctly, uh, you'll actually end up with an interoperable, a compatible implementation. Uh, and they should all be interoperable and compatible with one another if they're all implementing the same protocol. Uh, and so this is what lets the internet work as it does with so many different implementations of so many different protocols. And yet the whole thing actually works remarkably well. You can use any web browser within reason um, to access almost any web page and you will get more or less the right result out. Um, because they're implementing the protocols and specifications. Um, and, you know, file transfer protocol, all, all of these things work quite well. Email clients would be a, another one uh, as well. And so there are a bunch of bodies that define these protocols. The main one for the internet is the Internet Engineering Task Force, the IETF. And so they, uh, you know, have a, a process. So anyone can propose a, a new internet standard. And then it will have to go through the IETF standardization process to become, uh, you know, to be tested and accepted. Uh, after which it becomes a standard internet protocol. And they have very specific descriptions 
uh, and description language for these protocols so that they can be implemented reliably uh, on different systems in a way that will interoperate with each other. And so because these protocols tend to, they can operate at different layers, you can actually end up with a protocol graph or a protocol tree that's actually used for communications. So, you know, we've got two hosts here who, that have, for example, a file application, some digital library thing, uh, and a video application, and they might use uh, different types of protocols below them. So they might use a request reply protocol. This is not a particular protocol, this is a class of protocols. And so, you know, we might have one or more of, uh, you know, request reply protocols implemented. And then for the video application, we might need to have streaming data. So we might have one or more message streaming protocols implemented. Uh, and then to get these to communicate between different hosts, we need to have host to host protocols uh, at a lower level down uh, that will then go via the internet and connect to the other side. And so you end up with uh, protocols that depend on one another. So the, uh, the nodes in a protocol graph are the protocols and the links are actually representing these kind of relationships of dependence uh, upon one another. Uh, and so this can be one way to represent the, uh, the set of protocols uh, that you know, one or more applications that you're providing are dependent on. So yeah, this idea of layers and protocols and the dependencies between, between them are all interrelated uh, and there's considerable complexity in making this work correctly so that we end up with the most interoperable uh, systems that we can and that it's as easy as possible for applications to support these kind of protocols and for it to work for everyone rather than you know having uh, problems around compatibility when someone brings in uh, a new implementation of an existing standard so interoperability testing becomes quite important for uh, protocol impl implementations uh, as well so that's it uh, for this video uh, again uh, leave any comments, uh, questions, and we will try and uh, respond to those. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.